time for the promised showdown, the big debate of the night. So legit, Sagar and I have gone around and around on student loan debt several times. <laughs> you guys have probably watched it. Um, as you all know, as the backdrop, um, Joe Biden decided under a lot of pressure and really very reluctantly to forgive $10,000 in debt for students who had borrowed you know, $10,000 up to $125,000 in income. Also $20,000 in debt relief for people who were recipients of Pell Grants. And also, and in some ways this is kind of the most significant, put a 5% income cap on what their payments can be. It had previously been 10%, it was cut in half to 5%. Yes, I agree with that applause. Yes, applause. So uh, I am very much in support of this. Sagar's very much opposed to that. We have laid out our cases before. We'll jump in here in a moment. But I wanted to start by giving a chance to Kyle and Marshall to make their cases. Kyle is on my side. Marshall is on Sagar's side. Um, since. I, since I am talking in the microphone, I'm gonna take my female privilege here and go ahead and toss it to my man, Kyle, over here to go give ahead, the, the pros. Uh, you know, I will, I'm actually surprised that both of you didn't support it. Let me just say mm -hmm. that up front, because I do think, you know, you consider yourselves relatively populist, even though you might lean right. So do you think, will you admit that this position you guys are taking on this specific issue is not populist? Well, I'll let Marshall go ahead. I mean, okay, so. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, no, it's like, oh, yes, let's move on. We're, Next we're, point. We're, we're, we're all in the room here together. Like, I wouldn't say, like, I'm, like, a populist. Like, that's, okay, like, not, like... Okay, fair enough. So the label's not correct. Yeah, gotcha. so, so the label isn't correct. But B, I'm less interested in, like, debating this exact, uh, like, debt forgiveness. Because, like, look, after thinking about it, this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity just helped people, I think, within the constraints they had to do. So, like, this didn't help, like, a Harvard grad who, like, took on all this debt but is, like, going to make partner next year. Yeah, like, that, that, that seems, like, pretty okay. I, mean, I think that the real frustration point for Sagar and I wasn't that, like, oh, man, like, people, like, had their debt forgiven. It's that the way it was done and the total lack of conversation about fixing the underlying system just makes it worse. So, from my perspective... No matter what, like the, the higher education system is so screwed up that there's going to have to be some grand bargain someday. And obviously that grand bargain is going to require people who got screwed over and misled to be forgiven. And I know that there are going to be some people who like went to college in like the 80s or the 90s to pay off their debt who are going to feel that's fair, but that's, this is just going to happen no matter what. So the central beef that I think Sagar and I really share is to forgive the debt, but then not even have any baseline conversation of, Wait, like if you just look at the graph, the debt's gonna be right where it was in five years. Like that, that's like that's a, that's the thing that's like crazy to me. And if you're just like a, like, this is where Sagar and I actually disagree. Like Sagar, you do your monologues, mm -hmm. but like the woke diversity bureaucrats. Like that's not why like college well, is so. Crazy, but go ahead. It's not. It's not, yeah. that, isn't, that isn't that that isn't that isn't like like the fact that there's like a LGBTQ Latinx like plus like t tri gender center. <laughs> is not why the cost of college has exploded the past 30 years. Yes. The, the reason why the cost of college has exploded for 30 years is that we've had a system that's been rewarded when it increases costs. So if we're gonna have a conversation about debt forgiveness, we should forgive you. Like, wait, 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 wait. Okay. We, 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 should, we should just start with saying, we're gonna fix this system, and part of fixing the system is helping people who got screwed over, but whatever we fix the system cannot just give an excuse to a person in, a, in an office right now at let's say like Oregon State University, like the state that I'm from, where you definitely know like, you know what, like we could like work to lower costs, like we could make tough choices, or we could just guess that more often than not, the political pressure and the really genuine stories that you're telling are gonna convince Congress or the president in 2032 to do the same thing all over again. So, but here's the problem. The solution to everything you just said is to nationalize it. So it's not less government control. It's going even further than Biden went. Well, what do you, so what do you would you support nationalizing it? No. So, 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 so. But hey, look, it's the logical conclusion no, of the no, argument no, no, he no, just no, made. No, 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 no. If we're only making tweaks around the edges and, and the problem is the system as such, great, I agree. Nationalize it. Well, no, so, so. Go ahead, Marshall. So it's, this is what, like, as a proud graduate of the University of Oregon, right? Like, <laughs> our system, we. we our, our system is a mix of private schools, public schools, 
community colleges, like apprenticeship systems, like the note, maybe, but, <laughs> <laughs> or it's also the fact that like, you can't just like, I, I, this is, this, I think this is like our central political disagreement whenever we do these things. Like there is no like nationalize this. Like if we can't even, let's say like reduce the overall amount of like cost of increase in a year, we're not gonna just magically like upend the entire system. Yeah, but wait, but you're denying, okay, there was a long history prior to when the education, the higher education system went off the rails. For a long time in this country, college was virtually free. Yeah, because states spent more money no. on public and a lot, universities. No. And a lot no. less what happened, to what happened is there was an ideological project to undercut college education, number one, because uh, people largely on the right, but a lot of neoliberals across the board felt the population was getting too educated. And number two, it was a culture war thing to push back on like the anti-war protests in the 70s. They didn't like that. So they said, you know what? We're gonna use this culture wedge issue to cut the funding. That's how you end up with the University of California system going from being free to having ever escalating costs. And that goes across the country. So. The problem, the reason why you have college tuition escalating and escalating and escalating, becoming increasingly insanely out of reach, is because you've turned them into businesses rather than institutions of learning. Yeah. So that's the part that you have to roll back. Now, the part that I find, this is not targeted at my good friend Sagar or Marshall here, the part I find disingenuous from a lot of people on the right though is when they say, well, we gotta fix everything about it. The only people I hear really talking about big solutions for how to make college accessible and affordable and apprenticeship programs at community college, by the way, are people on the left who have been saying for a long, it's not like this conversation about, hey, let's have free college, hasn't been going on for a lot of years now. So I look at this and I say, this is something we can do right now given the politics of the moment, given that, no, there isn't 60 votes in the Senate to make college free, no, there isn't 60 votes in the Senate to have some overwhelming national reform plan, but you do have the opportunity to provide meaningful, life-changing relief for 43 million people right now. Yeah. And Am I really gonna say, no, we gotta wait and make sure we do it perfectly and this isn't exactly how I want it done. No, I'm gonna say, give those people some fucking help because they need yeah. it. And let me just give you guys the quote and then I want you to respond because, uh, so it was in the 1960s, Reagan changed it in California where it was virtually free. And he said that uh, the university should start charging tuition to quote, get rid of undesirables. Those who are there to carry signs and not to study might think twice to carry picket signs. So I think, no, I think this is important, Kyle, which is that I don't think either of us are defending like Ronald Reagan's exact policy in 1968. And in a way, and it's funny, we're all frustrated with people who are not here on the stage. Because I think we generally fare the assumption, like, look, for everybody out there who got their interest crapped and got relieved, I'm genuinely happy for you. Like, I don't ever want to see any of you suffer or have a diff more difficult life. My problem with it, again, to underscore exactly what you said, Marshall, is that I found it disingenuous that the way the administration did it. And I think, let's be honest, the mainstream supporters of said policy, they don't want to punish the colleges. Well, what I think is interesting about the administration, the Biden administration doing this, is that it was very clear he did not want to. So, and to me, that's actually a very hopeful story because where does this idea start? It starts with Occupy Wall Street. That was the first mainstreaming of can debt cancellation. Then it gets picked up by Jill Stein and made really mainstream by Bernie Sanders. He forces, he forces in the 2020 primary because this has become such a central issue and because it's so popular with young voters in particular, but really across the board, all of those candidates, including Joe Biden, have to take a stand on it. This was not something he wanted to do, but since he said it really, really clearly in the Democratic primary and in the general election, when he gets into office, he's like, well, shit, I guess I have to do it. And I can't come up with an excuse about a parliamentarian or Joe Manchin or the Republicans are evil because I could just do it myself. So the fact that you actually had activists and a movement that pushes him to do something he doesn't want to do, that to me is actually very hopeful. Because, I mean, he drug his feet. Is that the word? Drug? Dragged? Drug? Dragged. He, I, like, I like either one. Okay. Drug. He, <laughs> drug, I like drugged. Drug. Yeah. Possibly he delayed. Drugs 
as long I as like he, drugs. <laughs> yeah, he delayed as long as he possibly could until he saw like holy shit I'm I have like a three percent approval rating with young voters I gotta do yeah. something mm-hmm. and that's when they move to me that's a, a positive story about a very rare instance where the public pressure actually meant something to a politician against their will. So just a quick thing to, because uh, I want to respond to Kyle's quote, like, anyway, screw Ronald Reagan. Like, I don't really, yeah, yeah. Like, that's, that's how yeah, I want to, like, it's just, yeah. but that's like, that sounds right, bad. Right, 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 the right, point right. is, that's the ideological roots of the current system. Yeah, that's the point. That's the point is that's, well, well, no, the, well, no, that's no. the reason you said it's not the diversity, the woke, whatever, whatever. This is the reason why you have the escalating costs. Well, no, because like. Because it's the stripping of the public funding. And it's the fact that then they have to go out to the marketplace and recruit students rather than relying on the public funding for their go ahead, source of revenue. Go ahead, Marshall. Yeah, we look very similar. I get it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, so here's my thing. I, I guess like the central beef here with basically everyone's position here. I, I, I think I want to speak to like something about the show real quick. Like we're kind of like politically homeless. I think a lot of people are politically homeless. So like I just want to take you should see the left. Yeah, I, I, I just kind of want to say like I don't. Neither Sagar nor I want to be like, oh, like we're speaking for the right here. Right. Like neither of us, like I frankly like identify as like being on the right. right. So I want to like just get the chance to one person at a time, like illustrate that. Um, but on a broader level, like that is a part of it. Like a part of it is UC Berkeley not being free anymore. But guess what? A lot of it too is the fact that private universities, which always cost money in this country, they said, hey, wait a second. Like if it's GW where, where we met, yep. GW is a famous school because in the 1990s they figured out, wait, if we charge more money, that makes our school, which used to be a commuter school, like Harry Reid went to GW when he was like a Capitol Hill policeman <laughs> going part time. That's the school that GW used to be. GW figures out in the 1990s, if you charge more money, if you offer more amenities, that increases your prestige. Because people who say can't get into Georgetown or can't get into Harvard, they'll say, oh, look, this school GW is also prestigious too. So what when the federal government does what it does, which says like we will, subs- we will cover the loan at any amount, if, 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 it's, if it's 50 a year, we'll pay the loan. If it's 60 a year, if it's 80 a year, they will pay that amount. Yes. That plays a much larger role in the current situation we have now than Ronald Reagan making like kind of super racist no, it's, it's, 1960s. I mean, it's it's stripping of public one, funding though. So just the, well, that the, that starts the, in the 1960s. Just, so, the, 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 the boom the, happens in the mid 2000s yeah. and that's exactly when this government loan problem exactly kicked in with this phenomenon. And that is when you saw the explosion of tuition from 1400% predominantly this, the spike happens in the last 20 years. That is a story of the student loan problem. Guys, if the problem is that it's a business, make it not a business anymore. That's how the whole that, point. How does that, right. no, this is, this is like, so, yes. look, it, look, this reminds me of the, remember the Obamacare debate so that we Harvard, had when that think passed? Harvard should be look, nationalized? Wait, like a e- private university. Yes, I'd nationalize everyone all across the country. I would go that far, absolutely. Now, wait, now let me make my analogy. This reminds me of the Obamacare debate. Now, somebody like me, I obviously support a single payer Medicare for all system, but that wasn't in the cards. Now. There's a million strategic things you could have done to got us closer, maybe gotten us a public option. Obama didn't do it. But if you tell me, Kyle, it's the day of, are you going to vote for Obamacare or are you not going to vote for it? I'm going to do what Bernie Sanders did, which is like, this is what's on the table right now, so this is what I'm going to do. And it's a half measure, but you give tens of millions of people health care. So that's a win. Now, I think that's exactly analogous to this debate. What do I want to see? I want to see all the student loan debt eliminated. And I want rolling student loan debt elimination. So Biden, with the swipe of a pen, effectively but gives see, us free actually, college. This exactly underscores the problem. Because when you have rolling debt student, uh, student debt elimination, you're just going to continue to bail out the corrupt college system. But then because tuition is not getting capped, you can step which the in. The Democratic Party is just simply not going the to do anything about. The government can step it's in. It's a main constituency. The government can step in and regulate the prices. That's the point. In but the same way that we say, well, yeah, in the, wait. But, but Kyle, this is the point. The government is regulating the prices right now yes. by saying no, we will cover the maximum amount of load, like literally, like literally the way the system works right now. Yeah, so let's, because so it's let's a corrupt do it a scheme. different way. Well, no, that's why. No, no, this this but that's not on the this table. Isn't, this isn't like, the weird thing is it's not like corruption. It's just like basic incentives. Right, right now, the University of Oregon knows, like once again, like a decent state school, decently affordable. If we increase tuition, X amount of money, no matter what, students who are not having to pay for it up front will pay that amount. So. Let's talk about like this decision with like forgiving the debt. My beef with Biden is what he should have done is say, 
And once again, it's hard, but like we're engaging in fairy tales here, so like whatever. Right. You know, <laughs> what Biden should have said is we're forgiving this debt, and from now on, the Department of Education is not going to cover any loan that goes above yes. X percentage amount yes. of money. And the schools would have to do it right there. Like this isn't like a magical, we're yeah, gonna right, national but, like but that. No, but see, thing. that's the thing. It's not magical. That's the point. I'm sorry, Chris. No, go but ahead. That, that is the point. Yes, it's, it's like, not at all there's magical. There's a million things that we would all wave a magic wand and have him do that he didn't do. But those things are not actually on the table. What is on the table is debt relief that will help 43 million people right now. And, and I support that. And by the I, way, countries with free or near free college, Germany, Finland, France, Norway, Sweden, Brazil, and Slovenia. We can't one up you. fucking Slovenia? Seriously? <laughs> I mean, Slovenia what, what kind no of a joke is this? Say in the world, <laughs> and it's also a very tiny country. I'm sorry, Slovenians. I, I love you. <laughs> Huge Slovenian you audience for the show. Slovenian We're sorry. Is that, is that what Melania is? As Melania you can all Slovenia? tell, we are all, I don't and this know. again underscores what I think so many of you appreciate and what I love most. We can disagree, and it's just not a big deal. It's like, a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I think we should remember this all in our own lives like annoying uncles, family dinners friends that you may say something cringe, we can look past it. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.